Well, get in. Let's go fishing. Let's make it happen. This was my first trip after our hard freeze down here. The water temp started out at 58. Surprisingly warm considering how cold it got. It was midday when I got to the lake. Figured I'd start deep first, thinking the cold weather we had may have pushed the fish back out. Here's what I do to find those active fish moving fast and fishing slow. One important thing that I've done that helps me tremendously is I've put time in learning how to read my units. I'll put up a link right here where I talk about a lot of the important stuff that I do with my units. It's a lengthy video, but it's well worth the watch. That time I invested in learning how to read my units, it helps determine the depth I need to work my jig at and also will show when crappie are suspended around or above the structure. Some structure you can really tell when the fish are there but I don't depend on seeing fish on most structure. It only takes a few minutes to drop a jig down there and see if it'll get bit. A lot of the structure you can't see the fish as they'll be under limbs or behind the stumps or whatever the structure is they can get close to that structure and it's really hard for any type of unit to pick those fish up moving fast and fishing slow what's helped me a lot is I put that work in in scanning areas and building and finding crappie sanctuaries now I must say they are never always hot or holding fish. And why I move fast and fish slow. If you would please go ahead and give the video a thumbs up and those of you that have not subscribed please do so so you will not miss out on any of the other great crappie fishing tips or shall I say crappie catching tips that I supply in my vids. Crappie at times will prefer a certain depth and even a certain type of structure to hold on. It's not a necessity to have multiple rods, but it sure helps me save time in performing the important step of dropping several different jig color combos to find the pattern the fish are preferring for that day. There will be days where color may not matter much, but I go prepared for those days where color means getting bit or not, and they come often even from one day to the next, and sometimes even from the same day. I've seen days where it will go from a clear sky to cloudy or vice versa, and the fish will seem to have stopped feeding. Light penetration into the water affect the color crappie can see. So I feel it's a must to be prepared to change jig colors until I get on a consistent bite. I even see days where 
the better fish will prefer a color totally different than smaller fish. So although I may find a bite on small fish, I'll make jig pattern changes until I find a consistent good fish bite. Moving fast and fishing slow. I'll drop a playlist right here of what I feel is a great way to find areas crappie prefer and how I go about finding and marking structure. The good thing about this playlist is it is on a lake that I have never fished before, a new to me lake. It covers the first day on this lake. It was a struggle, but being persistent and having confidence the system I use work allowed me to stay at it. I feel you will find that playlist very helpful with the information I supplied in it. The term put that work in is real, but really has a great payoff. Jig colors, bait sizes, and jig head weight play a big part in my success. As you can see, and here the wind is about 15 to 20 miles per hour. Using a jig head that prevents slack in my line is critical on me being able to detect those light bites crappie oftentimes give. The term moving fast and fishing slow don't always have to be applied as some trips don't require a lot of moving. But I will say moving and having crappie sanctuaries in different areas and depths is a big part of my success. I'm a bit anal on how my jigs align on my hook. Just gives me confidence on it giving a good presentation. This is often how trips get started. I haven't been talking much to the cam lately as I've just not had time to do any edits.
right species, wrong size. Thump felt good. <laughs> That's a 5 16 y'all, on that uh, special jig that me and Steve come up with the other night. Over there in the lab, limits tackle lab. Always good to get a thump, even if it was just a micro, little old micro, uh, crappy. See if we can entice something a little better. Good to see that the little ones are still in here. Simple color change, guys, and just the old nice and Wow. As you often see on my zoom slow-mo shots, there are days where the crappie bite is hard to detect and why I feel adjusting my jig weight is critical. So what I'm really saying is what will help you is getting to know your electronics, learn your lake, fish different depths, <laughs> use the right weight jig, be open to change jig colors, and you'll be consistently slinging crappie in your boat just as I do. Yes, it is work, but that payoff is like no other. <laughs> I advise being prepared to work to find a good bite.
have a plan, have confidence, put that work in, and load your cooler with thick back slabs. Thanks for watching. More coming soon.